Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, I'm going to talk to you about neglect, learned helplessness, and how these things perpetuate chronic disease. I'm going to give you a trigger warning. This is a heavy topic. This is probably the heaviest that it gets. And a lot of people that have chronic health problems never heal from chronic health problems because they don't want to go here. So if that's you, I totally understand you clicking off the video. But if you really want things to change, you're ready for a bit of a heavy topic and you want to figure out how you can actually change your circumstances and heal a chronic health problem, let's look at this because it is necessary. And that's really the word. It is necessary necessary so abuse neglect specifically neglect how it causes learned helplessness and how that feeds into chronic disease chronic health problems so i actually think neglect is more sinister than abuse and i'm not downplaying abuse you know if you've been abused or if you've witnessed abuse like it's it's a horrible thing neglect in a way i really think it's worse because it is a form of abuse but it's like passive abuse and in the end it's almost like a form of gaslighting because so basically the way neglect works is we as as humans we have needs you know we have a need for food we have a need for entertainment we have a need for connection we have a need for uh, a physical somatic sensation of safety so this is like physical touch and being able to have like physical reassurance and especially when you're young when you experience neglect it's like gaslighting you as to like you shouldn't even have these needs like the fact that you have these needs is a problem is like a character fault it's like a problem with you and that's very sinister where that leads later in life is very dark it's a very dark place you've probably heard of this analogy as in you get like an elephant that is a little so he's a little baby elephant you know even a little baby elephant is still pretty big but they basically tie this baby elephant to a small tree and the baby elephant is having a tantrum he tries to pull himself away from the tree and he can't he's not strong enough he just can't do it and he associates the feeling of the rope around his neck or in his snout or wherever they attach it to his body as this kind of helplessness if this is present there's nothing he can do he's powerless he can't escape 10 years later ginormous elephant you know one of the biggest land mammals that exists and you get this this little rope you tie around his neck and you tie him to this tiny little fence you know this little rickety fence it's not even it's it's nothing even a human could push it down and the elephant doesn't even try the elephant doesn't even try to escape because it's learned helplessness it's learned that it's it's, it's too weak it's inferior it's not strong enough there's nothing it can do it's, it's powerless and it doesn't actually try this is a learned behavior from this this is usually forms from the so this in this case is more abusive you know being physically constrained but take this idea applied to neglect you know if you learn doesn't matter what you do you, you can never have your needs met doesn't matter what you do no one's ever going to love you like if that's what you learn as a child then you you will continue living your life following that pattern and you'll have a belief system that causes you to behave in a certain way that perpetuates this story this is really really tough let me give you a personal anecdote now so this is a, a personal story from my life over the last i mean i suppose encompassing there's a there's a, there's a four month backstory i'm going to keep it very short and sweet i'm going to keep it very much to the point so you can understand how as a consequence of neglect that i experienced as a child i am perpetuating my own chronic disease and that's like a big thing to own up to that's a really big thing to be able to see it's a really hard thing to be able to work through and as i said towards the beginning of the video not everybody wants to do this the thing is i'm dedicated to healing i'm going to do it like it's a, it, i'm doing this till death i'm going to get there i'm going to figure it out so when i was young through this neglect i learned that there were needs that i had that wouldn't be met and i shouldn't even try to meet them through my healing process i've learned to meet more of these needs so one of these is a i do really well with osteopathic care so with like osteopaths physiotherapists um my body needs the physical touch and the physical manipulations of like my neck and shoulder where I held a lot of trauma and a lot of tension and also in my abdominal area so like my stomach intestines liver gallbladder there's a lot of uh, machinery that goes on here and this needs reassurance Th this is what it needs and I spent the last couple of months traveling and I wasn't able to get my hands on the right kind of care that I needed you know in Thailand dry needling doesn't exist in the where I was in Pattaya City in the south it just didn't exist like there wasn't a single practitioner that did it I could not get the care that I needed and this entrained into me a, a sort of like a learned helplessness I was like there's nothing I can do I can't take care of myself and i kind of got used to it and this is the same with neglect you know what are you going to do if you're being neglected like you're not you're not just going to like you just have to get on with that it. it's like just figure it out survive get through it that's basically what you do and i realized this is something that i picked up in my childhood and then i was repeating this pattern now i'd actually moved from this environment i'm back in portugal now i have a full i have a whole like care system here you know i spent a lot of time here i managed to build up a full network of support you know i've got therapists physiotherapists like uh, the full network that, that you need for healing i have the full network 
work here. And I didn't plug into it. I didn't engage with it in the, the way that I needed to. You know, I booked one physiotherapy appointment a week because I thought I don't want to spend more money on it. I don't want to, I don't want to bother anyone. You know, I don't want to, and these are all like learned behaviors, you know, never having enough resources, always being too much for people. You know, one of the appointments is kind of far away. I don't have my driving license yet. I'm working on it, you know, breaking through that learned helplessness, but I need my wife to take me. I didn't want to burden her. So I didn't ask. So basically just neglect basically ends up in you perpetuating self-neglect. So you learn to neglect yourself. And then when this has happened, this becomes your default behavior. And when this is your default behavior, you perpetuate your chronic disease because you don't take the steps you need to heal yourself. So what's really important is you don't need to understand the neglect. You don't need to understand why you were neglected to heal this. You don't need to figure out why the people that neglected you neglect you. Like it's actually not important. What you need to realize is this has instilled in you a belief system and almost like a default program that you will run on by default. And you need to become conscious of it. You need to see it for what it is. And when you become aware that you're doing it, you need to choose different. You need to choose to do it differently. You need to move out of your default operating system. And this is hard. This will not come easily. This is, this almost feels like in a way fighting against the universe, fighting against fate. It feels really, really tough when you're doing it, but you, you break through and things will change very, very quickly. So I, I became aware of this, the rue, what was happening in my body. So I'm going to give you a, a, like an actual presentation of physically what was happening in my body. And this is, you're going to think like, oh, I have a lot of these symptoms. Like I have a lot of these problems going on. Oh, this is really interesting. I'm going to tell you how I can, how you can, how in my case, I resolve these very, very quickly. So the first thing that told me something was really going wrong is I had this irritating sensation in the bottom left region of my abdomen, in my colon. And I've had this sensation before and I can have the physical sensation and be okay. You know, I can let it be there and it doesn't really bother me anymore because I worked through a lot of trauma that was attached to it. If you're having a symptom, the way that you can identify if you have some trauma attached to that, if you have some emotion that is attached to the physical thing is, can you let it go? Like, can your mind stop thinking about it? Because if you've got something happening in your body, but your brain just keeps coming back to it, you know, I had this sensation and I was like, oh, I've had this sensation before. It doesn't really mean anything. It'll be gone later. But I could not let it go. You know, it was like a thorn in my side. It was pricking me, pricking me, pricking me. And I could not shift my focus from my experience I've learned. When I can't let something go, when I keep like incessantly being almost like desperately or fanatically focused on a physical sensation in my body of pain or discomfort, there's an emotional root there. There's something underlying it that needs to be processed. So I was feeling it. And I know that this sensation that I get in the colon, so the colon can be really connected to the deepest, deepest fears. So you're, you're looking at like despair, hopelessness. Normally people that have got really, really deep neglect have colon problems, you know, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, this kind of thing can happen. So I was feeling in this and I was just feeling this despair, this powerlessness. Like I'm like, I feel really bad. I have a bunch of other physical things happening in my body, but I have this as well. And it's like, this makes me feel powerless. Like I can't do anything. And I realized this irritating feeling that I was getting was actually my colon was irritated at me. It was irritated at my behavior because I'm actually not powerless. There's actually a lot I can do to change my situation. And I just wasn't doing any of it. So my colon was getting irritated. I was getting this, this strong feeling of irritation. And I was like, what is irritating me right now? And I was trying to figure out like, is it my wife? Is it this? Is it money? Is it something outside of myself? And then I went through everything. It was like, no, 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 no. And I was like, the only thing that's annoying me is my situation right now. And I realized I'm the one in control of my situation. I'm the one that can change this. So I, as soon as I acknowledged that, and I realized I'm the one that needs to do something to change it. I messaged my other osteopath. I booked a, an appointment in, an extended appointment. I've increased the frequency of my appointments from once a week to once every two weeks. And I'm going to throw something additional on top, I'm going to go and see an extra practitioner that I only see very occasionally. Like I'm layering the things on that I actually know that I need. And to someone else, this might seem extreme. You know, this is going to look like four body oriented appointments in a week. And this feels like a lot, but this is the thing. Like when you have neglect, you are always made to feel like whatever you want is too much. And then you'll never go for the things you actually need. But deep inside myself, I know what I need. And I realized that I was holding myself back from it. And now I'm going for it. And like, it costs money. And then there's that, oh, we never had enough. We had this scarcity when I was young. You know, my parents were were always on benefits. We never really had that much resources. So I've moved back into that. Oh yeah, but you have to do this and you have to like budget this and you can't spend it. It's like, I actually have the money. Like that's not even a problem for me right now. It's literally just my head getting in the way. It's a mindset problem. So I moved through that. I was like, okay, book the appointments. As soon as I booked all the appointments, got this feeling in my bowel, like I needed to go to the toilet, like this almost cramping, but not quite. And then I went to the, to the washroom and just passed the stool. And that sensation disappeared immediately. It's uncanny that you make that shift, that non-physical shift 
shift. I changed that mindset. I shifted that mentality and I behaved differently. I took an action and literally within, I think it was like less than 40 minutes, I had a physical release. I had physical change in my symptoms and it was gone. That's gone. I still have a bunch of other problems. You know, I've got a gastritis -y kind of feeling. I've got gassy bloatedness. I feel like the fascia around my liver is all like tied up. I've got a trigger point in my back. I just feel a bit miserable. I know that's because I've been basically neglecting myself. So a lot of the sting of that has gone. Like emotionally, I don't feel so attached to this crappiness that I feel because I've actually done everything that I can to make this happen. You know, I have an appointment tomorrow, I have an appointment on Thursday, I have an appointment on Friday. These things are going to get sorted out now. So that emotional charge of like feeling like super emotionally attached and distressed and like not being able to let the physical symptoms just be is gone. I can just, I'm like, okay, I can just get through this. This is fine. Everything's sorted now. And I feel very calm about it. And I know that this is not my first rodeo. I know in two weeks with this new extended regime of taking care of myself as I actually need to be taken care of. I mean, you'll see it in the quality of the videos. You'll see it in my posts. I'm going to be on cloud nine. I'm going to be flying. I'm going to feel fantastic. I'm going to feel amazing. And that's basically the consequence of, in essence, neglecting yourself. So if you don't feel good and you have neglect in your past, there's a really good idea to see how am I perpetuating this neglect against myself? The same thing can happen with abuse. So if you've been abused, you can say, how am I abusing myself? You can apply this because these are learned behaviors. We learn these things, especially if this happens to you before the age of seven, but even up to the age of 13, but particularly before the age of seven. People think like, oh, I have the abuse or I have neglect. I have this trauma. These things affect my health. They're affecting me. It's obvious to everyone around you how your abuse and neglect or how your trauma is affecting you. It's not this like invisible backpack that you carry around with you. It's evident in your behaviors, the way that you talk about yourself, the way that you make decisions, the way that you behave. It's obvious to everyone around you. It's not a secret. You're expressing it every single day. So look at what you're doing. Try and get feedback from other people. You know, I'm a coach, so I'm good at working through this sort of thing. But coaches are really bad at coaching themselves. My wife is an amazing support. She can mirror for me. She can help me apply my tools to coach myself. And she has her own stuff as well. Very, very helpful and very supportive. I've worked through and figured most of this out in conversation with her. So don't stay stuck. You really have to figure out how what has happened to you in the past has created a default operating system and how you are now choosing to operate in that system but you could be choosing because you're unaware of it so you have to see it first and then once you see it you can choose different if you don't do this you will run on this pre-programming for the rest of your life you'll become one of these statistics one of these people that have a chronic disease that they have that chronic disease until the day that they die because they just continue running on the same default operating system become conscious of it and make a change you are not powerless you do not have to abuse yourself you do not have to neglect yourself you can do it differently good luck it's a journey worth working on this is the work there's nothing more important than doing this this affects everything and everything changes after you do these things hope that's been really helpful hope that's been really interesting if you have any questions let me know and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye